All right, y'all. Y'all asked, and I am ready to deliver. I hear you, okay? I hear you. I'm anxious, and my tutorials aren't always that cohesive, all right? There, that's true. I'm here to deliver a masking tutorial, part two. I don't know how many of these I've done, but I'm just gonna assume this is part two. We're gonna get into it. How I really make my masks, how they look so freaking clean, and so that you can do it too. And let's not dilly-dally any longer. Let's just get right into it, all right? Open up Final Cut Pro, please, or whatever program you prefer. Where's the camera? Listen to me. You can do this, I promise. I promise. We're gonna walk right through it, all right? Now let's go. All right, friends. So, once you are in Final Cut Pro, get all your clips together organized that you're gonna be working with. So I've picked some examples here to show you. Uh, I've got some clips that I'll be editing of Geralt and Daenerys, uh, similar to what my last edit was about, but I'm, I've got clips already organized that I will be putting together. First things first, let's break down some tips. If you're gonna be using clips that are not the same appearance, as in like they look different color-wise, you are working with bluer tone stuff and warmer tone stuff, Color grade them first. I have a tutorial on color grading and how much that changes things. After you do that, then there's a couple different things you can do. Um, first of all, I would not only think that you have to work with clips where the characters are facing the way they're supposed to be facing. So like these two clips, Geralt and Daenerys are both facing the same way. So you might look at this and be like, I can't work with that. They're both facing the same direction. How is he gonna be looking at her? You can just flip the clip it's all good. One thing that helps my videos look more realistic is having multiple shots in a scene that are edited. So like with man-ups and masks. In an actual movie or show, you have a scene where you've got a close-up shot. You've got a far out shot. You've got over the shoulder where you're seeing that's still the back of someone's head, but then your main person's face. So like, I think a lot about all these and all the things that I'll need for each of this. Like I'm gonna need a shot of Geralt and his face up close that I'll mask. I'm also gonna need a picture of the back of his head for some scenes in an edit. I'm gonna maybe need a shot of him standing and I'm just gonna be literally cutting around his whole body in a mask and putting that in the scene. I'm not saying we're doing that right now, but that's just something that helps my stuff, I think, look more fun. That's not what you're here for. After color grading, you're gonna have your clips that you wanna work with. I recorded like 40 minutes of video footage and none of it's saved. It got corrupted, so. I instead will be voicing over the rest of this. Hope that's okay. Expect more person videos in the future. All right, so you're gonna navigate to your masks area and you're gonna hit draw mask. And this is where we're going to be masking around Geralt. So I've made my clip a compound clip and just kind of playing through it here but you really can just click and start masking around him and i'm going to kind of go around uh, his head and because this is zoomed in we have less we have to work with which is kind of nice instead of getting like a full body shot so just masking around his hair here and around the rest of the edge of that clip and we're going to want to do first you notice all these points around here. You're going to want to add a keyframe for all of those points and you do that here in the right panel. And you want to add a keyframe for the, the control points but also for transform so that you can move the mask around. So here's a keyframe for the control points uh, which is basically the mask shape. Uh, this is really important step and you also want to add a keyframe here for the position of that mask. And uh, that's so that you can move that around here um, and that will be adjusted with keyframes, but you can also uh, edit a single point in the mask later like this and it will move slowly over time since you added keyframes. So basically I'm just going to do this for everywhere that the mask kind of moves or needs to be adjusted in the process and I'll probably just speed through some of that, but uh, yeah, just kind of mask around his whole head. 
You can also feather it uh, as needed. Uh, this is also a really big step in my masking process because it's way better to have a smooth uh, feathered mask than something super harsh edged. And um, yeah, I think it just ups the whole masking game in general. So uh, I'm just gonna continue along here. I'll probably speed this up. I'm just masking around, making keyframes as I go and you know, making sure the feather looks nice. So I also always make sure to add a keyframe at the very end of the clip so that it doesn't cut off at a weird spot. Alrighty, I feel like the mask looks pretty good now, so I'm just gonna start adjusting it some more. I noticed it needs to be a little scaled up here because his face didn't look the same size as Daenerys, and then rotating it a bit more to try to get his eye line to kind of match up with if he was actually looking at her. Uh, it doesn't look perfect right now, but I, you know, just I'm gonna keep messing with it until I am happy with the placement. Before I actually do that though, I'm going to color grade this a little bit more so that it just better matches up the clip of Daenerys because it still seems a bit too saturated. And obviously the clip coloring was different to begin with, so I need to make Geralt a little bit more blue. And this is where we navigate to the blur section and click Gaussian Blur. It's what I tend to use most often when I want to blur a character uh, that's kind of in the background. And it's obviously way too much by default when you click on it. So go back to your effects panel and take this down to however much you would like if you are adding blur to your masks. But yeah, I think it looks way more realistic when you have one character in focus and one out of focus because that's how it would be in a close-up camera shot. Then all you gotta do is make these a compound clip and add a coloring to it for your video and you're set to go with that first one. I think it turned out pretty nice. As I said in the last stuff, uh, a, like 40 minutes of me talking through all of this here was uh, corrupted. So I'm just gonna kind of fast forward through this next series of clips and hopefully you can still follow along. I'm literally just following the same principles I used in the last bit that I just walked you through. Uh, but basically I'm gonna be cutting Daenerys out of a clip this time and putting her over top of where Ciri is standing in that shot of Geralt and Ciri. Um, and a couple things I just wanna point out throughout this process. Uh, when I mask, I specifically leave an edge around my characters because I know that later I'm going to be feathering the mask inward. And if I leave a bit of an edge there, then it's the edge that gets feathered and not like cutting into the character's hairline or shoulders or something. So that's super helpful for me. Um, another really key point uh, that I hope people take away uh, that will really help with masking, I think, is that you don't have to mask while zoomed out of the clip here at like 50%. I know Final Cut Pro by default will show you clips 50% uh, zoomed in, which technically I think is odd because if you're viewing the full video, then aren't you viewing it at 100%? Anyway, I tend to zoom in the viewfinder to like 150, 200, even 400% sometimes so that I can get really close to the details and can mask around that really easy without really struggling to see everything I'm kind of like, you know, going right around. So um, I would highly recommend that you start zooming in on your clips as you mask so that you can catch those finer details because trying to do that, like trying to go around some super fine edges of like the face or hairline can be really tricky if you're still out of this 50% zoomed in view, if that makes sense. So. Try zooming in when you're masking. Also try leaving an edge specifically so that when you do feather, it doesn't cut into the character. Uh, and yeah, try to get sizing of the characters the same. That sometimes is something I don't always see in videos, which like literally no hate to anybody if they do that. But um, yeah, if you're going for more realism, then try to make everything proportional. Additionally, uh, you know, spend some time with this. I used to get frustrated at first with masking when I didn't really know what I was doing and I would make some crappy masks just because I didn't want to spend a ton of time on this. But if you really use keyframes well, if you pay attention to when a character starts to move a certain way and you add a keyframe there and then you add keyframes when they've finished doing their next bit of movement, um, 
things will look like it moves in tandem like the mask will move in tandem with the movement of the character <sighs> i feel like i'm speaking another language but i hope that makes sense yeah i'm just gonna kind of speed through the rest of this you know the drill it's just me masking around the character adding keyframes moving the mask the next time the character moves and so on I played a little bit here and resized the Daenerys clip so that she would be in the proper position uh, just next to Geralt and kind of sizing wise. Uh, but I also realized that at a certain point in the shot, a bit of Siri was still peeking through. So I needed to copy and paste some of the original background back over top of uh, where Daenerys is standing, like behind her, so that we can hide Siri. But yeah, after that, it's just kind of a matter of uh, moving things around, uh, adding some keyframes for position for the Daenerys mask so that it follows the movement of the camera in the shot of Henry Cavill. Um, and that way, again, the man up looks more realistic. But Finally, it is time to color correct the clip of Daenerys so that it matches the Geralt shot. And then that's pretty much it with his mask. So here I am just adding some sharp curves. Uh, so that you can really match that really bright uh, light that you have on Geralt's face. Um, and yeah, after that I'll probably just add some color board stuff to match some of the coloring on uh, the scene that Geralt was in. Uh, later you'll see that I add um, a shadow over Daenerys as well as a uh, mask an additional copy uh, of Geralt so that I get that corner of his cloak to cover her shoulder because that's kind of how it would be in the actual scene um, and it just looks like they're actually standing by each other and I also uh, add a bit of warm yellow light to the top of Daenerys's head because if you notice on Geralt there's this bright yellow uh, colorful light on the right side of his face so I just wanted to make sure that things matched up for both people so yeah Lots of details, but it really comes together in the end, and I think they turn out really nice. So I will show you here the first and current mask that you saw at the beginning of this video, but also this one we've been editing currently, and then also another mask that I edited later um, that I did talk through, but <laughs> obviously uh, with lost footage, I cannot recover that. But you guys get the gist. I hope this helped clear up how I edit masks and how you can too as well as some tips that might help you in the future um, to summarize you know add an edge to your masks so that you can feather them inward uh, zoom in on your clips when you mask so that you can get finer details and just make sure you're color correcting and matching the lighting and uh, warmth of your scenes together really blends things together nicely and yeah hope that helps I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I always enjoy really making these. Uh, it is a little sucky that some of my footage gets lost and some of my voiceover as well. But hey, if it's worth it in the long run, I'm always happy to help uh, teach something that I picked up along the way myself after following many a YouTube tutorial. Um, I hope you guys got something out of this. Love you all so much. This editing community means the absolute world to me. It is literally like one of my biggest passions. Um, but yeah, can't wait to see you all and communicate with you all more in videos in the future and leave any suggestions you have down below and I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much. Bye.